While I was scrolling Twitter this past week, I something caught my eye. As I was browsing, I saw this post from Justin Basil. Shout out to Justin, one of the best resources on Pokemon TCG competitive play. Definitely follow their website. And they did a summary of the top decks in online tournaments for the for the last week. And I was not expecting Ancient Box to be number one. Now, if you've seen my videos of late, you've definitely seen me fight against more Ancient Box decks, and I've been very confused of, like, why is Ancient Box so popular? And this is translating to the competitive side as well, where Ancient Box is the most popular deck played right now. And I think some of the, the reasons, let's go look at this matchup spread based on online data. Yes, uh, Ancient Box does suck against Charizard, but on paper, it seems to have a, a advan advantageous matchup against Regidrago. I personally don't think that's necessarily true. Regidrago definitely has outs to win that match. Uh, a big advantage against Raging Bolt. Um, we have an, yeah, Ancient Box has an advantage against Gardevoir, bad against Lugia, but that's not being played as much. Um, and then as a lot of the turbo decks are on the rise, trying to counter Reggie Drago, such as Turbo Roaring Moon and Maridon and Iron Hands, Ancient Box has a high winning percentage against those types of decks as well. So today we're going to be covering ancient box and in particular this is a build from jack a who uh, played at ditto masquerade got first place and scored 10 and 1 so shout outs to them i'm jeff from in thirdperson.com make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel and let's talk about ancient box which i don't really know if we should still be calling it ancient box anymore we should just call i know there's roaring moon uh but that's roaring moon ex and ancient box kind of describes this but at this point it's a roaring moon deck right it's the basic pokemon 140 hp and we're using vengeance fletching as its primary attack does 70 damage and this attack does 10 more damage for each ancient card in your discard pile you're trying to throw all of your other pokemon and all your supporters in and trainer cards in the discard pile so at some point this roaring moon is hitting for massive damage potentially even one hit ko territory on some of the biggest pokemon in the game now it does take some time you're doing small damage at the beginning of the game and you're eventually ramping up and hopefully you're taking the right prizes along the way to maximize your prize map We've got four copies of Roaring Moon, four copies of Fluttermane, where besides being discard fodder, it also has that ability, Midnight Fluttering, where as long as this Pokemon's in the active spot, your opponent's active Pokemon have no abilities except for Midnight Fluttering. And this can slow down stuff like a Regidrago, uh, Iron Thorns, I guess, but that doesn't really, it kind of matters in this matchup because of the, some of the new Pokemon in here. But Fluttermane can slow your down your opponents down a little bit. We also have Radiant Greninja, discard an energy, draw two cards. We've got Iron Bundle as a potential alternate gust option where its hyper blower ability forces your when you put it on the bench and you can discard Iron Bundle and force your opponent to switch out their active Pokemon with something else. Great Tusk, you, you could theoretically use it for land collapse for discarding. Uh, four cards if you've played a draw sub, like a ancient supporter during that turn but really it's it's here to go into the discard pile also with walking wake because this you're not attacking with this we don't have water energy here we do have it in here as discard fodder while also having only a single retreat cost so that if it gets stuck in the active it's easier to get it out uh, two cards that are in some ancient box builds but not all ancient box builds are petrant and pheasantipity ex petrant has the subjugating chains ability where it can switch your active pokemon with a dark pokemon on the bench this can help you uh pivot if your opponent's trying to play stall traps or anything like that you can use petrant to move them out you could also theoretically use irritated outburst as an attack where it does 60 damage for each prize your opponent's taken if they've taken four prizes it does 240 damage if they've taken five it does 300 damage so it could potentially be a nice secondary attacker but i i don't like that this and pheasantipity are two prize liabilities when this the strength of this deck is that it is a single prizer and it's tough to take multiple prizes, but they do help from time to time. Pheasantipity lets you draw three cards after one of your Pokemon's knocked out. It does have an attack here as well, but Cruel Arrow, three energy, 100 damage, and you can snipe, probably not using this. So I would definitely pick your spots when to play these cards. Generally, you're not going to play them. The Pheasantipity, you'll definitely play more than the Petrarunt 
EX, but keep them in your hand until the time is right. For trainer cards, we've got two copies of Ultra Ball, discard two cards, grab a Pokemon of your choice. Four copies of Earthen Vessel lets you discard a card while also drawing two basic energy from your deck. Great for getting that dark energy while also discarding ancient cards. Four copies of Explorer's Guidance. You get to look at the top six cards of your deck, put two into your hand, and then discard the rest. Uh, there will be times where most of the time you're going to want to play Sada's Vitality, which lets you attach up to two basic energy to your ancient Pokemon. Well, one to each of your ancient Pokemon, and then draw three cards. But there will be times, especially at the beginning of the game, if you're going where you just can't do the Sada play. So Explorer's Guidance can help you chuck a bunch of ancient cards into the discard pile while getting some pieces that you need. Two copies of Countercatcher. When you're behind on prizes, you can gust an opposing bench Pokemon into the active. This can be especially helpful because you're oftentimes behind on prizes starting out the game. Three copies of Pokestop, where you get to discard the top three cards of your deck and any item cards you get to put back into your hand. Great for grabbing a lot of the item cards in here, including Pokegear 3.0, where you get to look at the top seven cards of your deck and grab a supporter card you find there and put it into your hand, giving you more opportunities to find those supporter cards you need. Especially, I love the combo of Pokestop, grab a Poke Gear, and then Poke Gear to find your Sada's Vitality is fantastic. A new, another new card in Ancient Box is Night Stretcher, where you get to put a Pokemon or a basic energy card from your discard pile and just put it straight into your hand. Now, Super Rod is one card that gets you three things, but you have to put those into your deck. And the value of having either an energy or a, a Pokemon back into your hand is absolutely critical. So Night Stretcher, fantastic card in this deck. One copy of Superior Energy Retrieval, where you discard two cards and grab up to four basic energy from your discard pile and put it back into your hand. Another great way of discarding those ancient cards while also getting a bunch of your energy back. One Super Rod gets you three in any combination of basic energy as well as Pokemon from your discard pile back into your deck. One copy of Palpad to shuffle two uh, supporter cards. That's oftentimes going to be two Sada's Vitality, but you might want to put your one boss's orders back as well. We get to switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon to the active spot. Uh, four copies of Nest Ball to get our basics down. Four copies of Ancient Booster Capsule where you get plus 60 HP and you recover from all special conditions and can't be affected by special conditions. So uh, I, I'm playing on Pokemon TCG Live, you're going to run into that Venomoth deck a lot uh, these days and you just don't get hit by the confusion, which is fantastic when Ancient Capsule is on. And then Seeker Box is my preferred A spec of choice. Also the one that Jack A uh, played in their deck. So this is part of the reason why I chose this one to cover today. Uh, Seeker Box lets you discard three cards and then you get a Pokemon tool, a supporter, a stadium, and an item. So insane value for this card, which can really help you pop off while getting a, throwing a bunch of ancient cards in the discard pile as well. And then last but not least, seven dark energy. Uh, I've been hearing some rumblings, like I, I generally like to play Ancient Box second, but I have been hearing rumblings about playing first as the preferred way to go. Let me know in the comments if you play, prefer playing first or second. I think it's fine either way, but um, I do like, or what's it called? The general game plan is to get a bunch of Ancient Cards into the discard pile and swing repeatedly with Vengeance Fletching uh, until you get to a point where you're starting to knock out big basics and hopefully uh, make up some ground with multi-prize KOs where possible. And I think the big the big strategy here on top of that is not every Ancient Box deck will play the Petron or the Pheasant Dippity, but if you are playing these cards, make sure you're playing them at the right time where you are maximizing their value while minimizing the opportunity for these to be two prize liabilities i think personally i would prefer without the without these two cards but i have won multiple matches because they were in the deck and if i didn't have them i would have just lost so you, you kind of have to weigh the pros and the cons of whether or not you want these in your ancient box deck but the deck is still very strong we did see the matchup spread looks very intriguing right now for ancient box and so that might be the reason why you play this deck all right, let's get to these matches. Ancient Box go first or second? I've started to see people say first. I don't know if that's true, but we're going to go for it. I think at the very least, Reggie Drago really wants to go first, and we don't want them to go first. So, hmm, do we? Hmm, here I really wish we were we were going second. Uh, let's go Fluttermane in the active. Yeah, this, this hand kind of sucks. <laughs> Um, 
let's see what we can do. You got to Arceus League last week. Congratulations. Okay, let's go see if we can mill some stuff that we, we want. Okay, we get a Night Stretcher and a Nest Ball. Um, I need energy. This is bad. This is bad. We can probably get a second Roaring Moon down. But after that, I kind of don't want to bench anything else. We do have a Petrarut that can help us retreat the Flutter Main if we really need to. But yeah, kind of rough starting go here. I think the ideal is we play Pokestop, we discard two energy and draw into a Pokegear. Off the Pokegear, we get Sada, we attach energy, we draw an energy from there, and then we put down the Petra Runt, which helps us put in all our stuff. Okay, this is a match that we should have an advantage in, right? Uh, eventually, we should one-shot a lot of their stuff. Iron Hands is annoying, though. Iron Hands can take one-hit KOs and take extra prizes. Snorlax didn't summon the energy. No, it didn't. Here comes that four seal stone. Let's see how they pop off. Okay. They could potentially start swinging right away, and that would be not good. Oh, they bricked. Okay, let's go. I mean, not to say that it's done. They still have Squawkabilly. They still have Forest Seal Stone online. There are some really good options for them on this following turn. Yep, they could hit it right here. And the unfortunate side effect... Oh, they're going for the Iron Hands play. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. They could just DTE and then take the Flutter Main out. At which point we will be very sad. The flutter main or the double turbo energy might be a little short sighted though, because they're not one hit KOing the Roaring Moon, but we have to respond very quickly if this is the way it's going to go. Let's go. So they're going to jump out to an early two prize lead. I hate that for me. But they're not... They have to two-hit KO the Roaring Moon after that. Assuming we even get Sada's Vitality. If we don't draw into Sada's Vitality, then we're just dead. Okay. Let's see what we can do. Well, I guess not necessarily. If we can tank a hit. Like, if they get bosses or... Uh, okay. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. Right now, not looking great. Absolutely not. Okay. Okay. Um, Ultra Ball, let's go and thin our deck. We'll get the Walking Wake and the Great Tusk out of here. Uh, we probably don't want Pheasantipity right now. Uh, let's go take a Roaring Moon. Yeah, Pheasantipity is kind of horrifying here. Not necessarily the worst possible fate, but... Okay, Secret Box is good. Secret Box is good. Let's go and get some energy out. Hmm. Okay, I will actually get rid of this Roaring Moon. Let's go grab some energy. And we can go Secret Box for... Let's get rid of Ultra Ball. And... Do we get rid of two energy here? Yes. I think we get rid of two energy. Ultra Ball, two energy. We grab ourselves Sada. I think we can grab... There's only two in the discard right now. Uh, we can grab the Ancient Booster Capsule. We can grab Earthen Vessel. And let's grab a Pokestop. Yes. That's a... A nice... Handle on cards there. I think we can get rid of the Pokestop. Let's go grab some energy. Let's go in Sada here. One, two... Draw a couple more cards. Uh, we could counter catcher, which could be a way. Oh, we could take out the Mew. The Mew is actually kind of busted here. Actually, the, yeah, hold on. Let's go and Ancient Booster Capsule up. And we will go and let's actually gust up the Mew. I like gusting up the Mew. Take two prizes. And they are not one-shotting the 
Iron Hands is not one-shotting us. So let's go for that. 300. We have more time to throw Ancient cards in the discard pile. And potentially get ourselves to a point where Iron Hands can start one-shotting things. So, yeah. That was good. That was good. That was good. So what are we at right now? 80, 90. Oh, okay. It was... <laughs> 150 i think so 300 yeah 150 we need a bunch more so we can take a one hit ko here but i think we're okay um i mr nick they still have pheasantipity with the they still got free retreat pheasantipity with the board they go on full tony hawk they've already burned four seal stone so like that doesn't do anything other than thin the deck you missed that uh, no worries no worries Arvin. All right. What are they going to... Probably, yeah, just Generator and start building up another attacker. And maybe the Raikou here, just to try and keep the pressure on. Ah, uh, the Raikou's not taking a one-hit KO here, though. So this actually becomes very awkward for them. Yeah, okay, it's got to be the Maridon then. And they're going to need to do some switching shenanigans throughout. Okay. But they will come in with the Iron Hands, and it's not doing... Ah, okay, yeah. Are we going to be in a position to one-hit KO this Iron Hands right now? I don't think we are. I think we would need a Miraculous turn here in order for that to happen. And I don't think we are there at this point in time. Ooh, we could, though. We could. Um, we could get the Petrarunt out, and that could help us. Let's go and see what we can get. Uh, Explorer's Guidance, that sucks. Explorer's Guidance sucks. I think we have to play that. Let's go and grab... Let's grab Night Stretcher, and... How much energy is in the discard pile right now? Zero. Okay, Earthen Vessel then. Okay. We are hitting for 180. Um, let's go and Greninja. Now, Greninja does kind of suck because they can take two prizes off that. If... Okay, that's 180. We're going to get to 200 here. Mm. Okay, that's 200. Uh, we will get the one-hit KO on the following turn. Now, if we go like this, right? And, oh, we don't. We prize the Petra Runt. We prize the Petra Runt. No! That kind of sucks. That sucks. Hold on. Is the Petra Runt in the discard pile? No, it's not. Okay, then we wasted... We wasted this. Hold on. We could do this. We could do this. Right? If we hard retreat. And now we have to... We force them to gust. And... But if they knock this out, we really need to find Sada's Vitality on the following turn. So we'll go swing for the 200 here. They have multiple gust options, though. That's profoundly annoying. I think we... I think we're still in a pretty decent spot. Like, they need the boss right now. Iron Hands is not going to take a one-hit KO. They're not going to take two prizes. If they go in with the Maridon... They're discarding a whole bunch of energy. Oh, okay. They can Luminion for boss. Sure. Oh, they just have boss. Okay. Um, we still have the Roaring Moon. Yeah, if we're knocking them out with the... Uh, I think we're still fine, right? They need to get... At this point, we are in one hit KO range of everything else. Right? We knock this out. They knock out... Like, they are, yeah, 220. We put, 
How many Roaring Moons do we have? Two. Okay. Um, let's go and bench this one. And we we could Night Stretcher. Um, but Night Stretcher means... Okay, yeah. I think we can afford to Night Stretcher a third Roaring Moon out. Uh, do we need another Roaring Moon? No, we don't. I think we just play... Sada's Vitality. We attach one. And we... Uh, sure. Right. We go and attach the Ancient Booster Capsule. We attach. We are now swinging for 230 damage. We should one-hit KO everything on this board. We just have to hit... We should... This should be game. Right? At this point, I don't think they have a route to take two prizes. They need a second Iron Hands. They need to go absolutely crazy on Electric Generators. And I don't think they have it like that. They might have a second Iron Hands. They probably one generator with the hits two energy, and they need a second double turbo. So not impossible. Certainly not impossible. But it's gonna be tough. And they're going for it right now. Please. One energy. One energy. Two. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, but they also need a boss. They we do know they have Luminion in play. They do we do have Luminion in hand. So they need a double turbo energy. They need boss. Or they prime catcher. If they have a single, a charm or single prizer to put out. P potentially. If they try and sacrifice that. Um, let's see. This may not be as done as I initially predicted. If they put out the Maridon, it's over. If they put in the Iron Hands, it's over. Okay, Ursaluna. There you go. That's a good one. That's a good one. Ursaluna with the charm. Oh, we have Countercatcher, so it's fine. It's fine. 310 HP. That's really hard for Roaring Moon to knock out. So we have we have Countercatcher. We're good. We're good. Yeah. So we're fine. Oh, we have boss too. Um, yeah, let's go and I just want to see, can we knock out, can we put ourselves in a position to knock out the, let's grab this earthen vessel and let's grab this pheasant dippity. I don't think we can. Yeah, we're going to have three cards. We'll go down. I don't want to go down to zero. I don't want to go down to zero. That's actually going to be a problem. 260. Um, 270. We're going to be short, which is fine, right? 270. Um, let's show, go and gust up the iron hands here. And we swing for 280 damage for the win. GG's. Yeah, the Ursaluna with the charm is a really nice play at the end. And that potentially could have doomed us had we not had... And there's the, the Petra Damn it. <laughs> that could have potentially doomed us at the end. But um, really liked the way that sequenced the... Um, I think the big play there was not giving them... I mean, they did have... They did have boss, so they were able to take the extra prize. But once we took out the the Iron Hands, they had a tough time going about it. We did not give them a, a prize map that was going to be helpful for them. We didn't bench the Petra Runt. We didn't bench the Pheasantipity. Again, situational techs in this deck that you may or may not want in your Ancient Box deck. Uh, didn't need them there that time. Hopefully, we can find a match where we do. So we can show them being helpful. But we'll take that win. GG's. <laughs> okay, Fluttermane shutting down the Reggie Drago V Star abilities. Kind of nice. Let's see where we can go from here. I have little exp like Ancient Box or yeah, Ancient Box is a deck I don't play all that much. So we'll see what we can do from here. Uh, the Gudra is kind of annoying. It does hurt our 
a Roaring Moon's attack power. But we'll see. We'll see. We could use Secret Box to get... Um, I guess if we attach here... No. We'll go. We'll keep Flutterman in the active, and let's just set up our bench, and we'll play Explorer's Guidance on the following turn. Aspothra Baynet. That was a deck, like... I've seen some people talking about Aspothra in the current format. I, we, we're just out of time. This format's been going to be very short, so... Uh, we're, we're not going to get to Aspothra, and that's fine. Maybe we'll talk about it in the in the new format. There's a deck that I do want to play in Stellar Crown that no one's talking about. I don't know if it'll actually be good, but I think it'll be better in the new format. <laughs> so I want to try it out. Um, can I leak this? Ah, it's probably not that great sauce. So, ooh, actually, now, do we want a Greninja here? Um, let's go, we'll go Nest Ball here. Let's just go Nest Ball for a, let's just get another Roaring Moon down. And let's go and see what we can get in terms of Explorer's Guidance. Yeah, Ancient Booster Capsule's nice, as well as a, what, Nest Ball here? I guess we have an Earthen Vessel. Oh, Night Stretcher is kind of good. Hmm. What do I want? Or another Nest Ball to get a Greninja down. That could be cool. Yeah, let's go do that. Okay, we get rid of those. Let's go and grab a Greninja. And so we can just draw more cards is kind of the goal here. Okay, Pokestop's all right. Um, let's go Ancient Booster Capsule on the moon. And I do want to attach an energy here, so I think we actually have to get rid of the Pokestop. Let's go attach. And we will end our turn here. And hopefully they don't have the epic pop off. Fluttermain could potentially help with that. Now, Seeker Box, we have to discard three cards. And that is kind of annoying because I don't want to get rid of energy retrieval and this. I think we'll be okay. But yeah, super annoying. Let's see how they, they play this out. Because the Reggie Drago V-Star power is very nice here, but they're not going to get it with Flutter Main out. I think we Greninja first. Hopefully we get a we get some pieces from here, but we'll see. Uh Dingo Stida, thank you so much for the follow. I hope you're doing well. You don't mind shy on your free time. Yeah. Feel free to drop it in the chat. For everybody. Our opponents taking their sweet time here. I wonder how much the Flutter Main is actually bothering them. Right now, we're not swinging for too much. 70, 80, 90, 100. That does kind of suck. So let's see what we can do. If they get that E-Switch combo, Temple of Sinnoh doesn't really matter. And, oh, research. Okay. Let's see it. Bring them out. Okay, the fact that they're not moving right now. Oh, okay. E-switch. We could get eat a dragon laser here. Or worse. If it's the Gudra attack, this actually becomes very annoying. Okay, it's just dragon laser. All right, then it'll probably drop 30 on the, the Roaring Moon in the active. Oh, okay. On this one. Interesting. Possibly setting up for a multi-KO later. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Uh, I think we... Yeah, let's go and conceal cards. Get rid of this. Get two. Counter catcher would be nice. Superior energy. No, I don't want a superior energy retrieval right now. I think we have to secret box, though. Um, let's get rid of a nest ball. Uh, I might want the counter catcher. Mm, I need energy, too. Okay. Okay. Let's go and grab Sada. 
tool item i could get the energy retrieval back or no i can't okay hold on we'll get the stadium and let's go grab i kept earthen vessel so we can go and grab a um let me grab poke gear so we can get another okay potentially get some more stuff let's go or have another supporter for the following turn so let's go and attach two okay we get another explorer's guidance i think we get down another roaring moon here and i think we attach here let's go and poke stop here and hopefully we don't hit too bad the great tusk going in there is good the other one's not so much let's go and put the ancient capsule on the roaring moon on the hmm. do i put it on the fresh one or i think we put it on the fresh one and let's go and put energy on this one and let's go swing for 130. We have two more energy in the deck, possibly one. We can, we have two more kicks at the can for a, um, okay. They're going to get their Reggie Drago out. That's actually kind of unfortunate here because they're going to Gudra V-Star spam over and over again. And I don't know how we get around that. I don't think we're doing enough damage, but again, they are, I guess, uh, let's see how they play it. Let's see how they play it. Because they're still only, if they're using the Gudra attack, they're only taking one prize at a time. We should be able to three shot. And they, this deck generally doesn't set up three attackers. I mean, they have the Radiant Zard, but let's see. Yeah, one of the reasons why Ancient Box is doing well is that based on online data, Ancient Box kind of is do, is do has won more matches than Reggie Drago has in a head-to-head. -head. I'm not sure that's entirely true, but we'll see. Okay, they get the Dragapult out. Okay, start building up that Ogre Pond, potentially E-switch to the second Reggie Drago. Let's see how they play it. Start building up the second one. That makes sense. Do they want to hit the Legacy Star? I don't know if they have to. They've got a lot of pieces already. I don't think they have to recover anything right now. Maybe a research or something, but like, it's their hand's not looking too bad. So if you were them, do they drop the damage counters or... Do they try and... Yeah, I'm curious to see how they play this. Do they go with the Gudra attack or they go with the Dragapult attack and try and take a multi-prize KO, set up a multi-prize KO later? I think they're thinking the those options out right now. Okay, here we go. Let's see it. Yeah, doing damage. They're going for the Dragapult. That should be... I guess there's a world where they potentially set up... Okay. Yeah, soften up the Greninja. And yeah, soften up everything. Yeah. Okay. All right. So do we want... I think we leave, the, I think we go in with the Reggie, the damaged one right now. And let's see if we can get a Sada here. Okay, Fluttermane. Let's go and Poke Gear. We get Sada's Vitality. That's fantastic. And we can go, we have two energy in there. Three. Okay, cool. Let's go pop off. Attach two. Boom, boom, boom. We can get rid of the Walking Wake. And the Flutter Main grab ourselves another Roaring Moon. Uh, we do have, just in case, we have the Fez, Fetcher, uh, Petra Run and the Pheasantipity as well if we need it. Right now, I think we're okay. So I'm not too concerned 
by that. We could counter catcher as well here. We are doing 180 damage. I don't think we can get to a point. Actually, let's go and poke stop here and maybe we get ourselves to a one hit KO. No. We are a little short on one hit KOing the Reggie. Dr yeah, we'll hold on to counter catcher right now. Let's go and attach to the third Roaring Moon. I could get, I'm not going to get greedy here. Let's just go and take this KO, Vengeance Fletching, Fletchling, on the Reggie Drago. Get ourselves back up to four prizes. Explorer's Guidance Palpad, that's good. And get our, our Sadas back here, potentially. And we have lost... Okay, we've only lost one Roaring Moon. So, let's see. They're going to need an E-Switch and some other stuff here to really make this worth their while. Let's see how they play it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, that Earthen Vessel is not doing anything right now. All our energy is spoken for. Let's see. I'm not sure. Yeah, is the play to go after? Because we can go after an Ogre Pawn on the following turn. I'm not sure that's worth it. I think we hold on to that. Okay, they get their Pheasantipity out. So we have two smaller targets, but I don't know if we have enough Gusting. Yeah, we did lose Boss. Like, maybe we put Boss back in on top of Sada so that we have that out, potentially. Let's see. Yeah, Reggie Drago, the hot deck right now. They are going to get the E-Switch, and they probably will attack again. Okay. Uh, they're going to have a hard time after this. Re if we can take out this Reggie Drago, we I'm pretty sure we just win at that point. But I'm not sure we... Let's see it. Okay, they get the Kyurum. Oh, they might be blowing up for the 110, 110. Yeah, they're going to take two prizes here with the Kyurum attack. Okay. That is kind of annoying. Uh, they do discard all the energy along the way, though, right? Okay, let's see it. Because, yeah, Kyurum blows this up, knocks out this, weakens this, and weakens this. But yeah, taking... Oh, okay. Legacy Star. They get a Prime Catcher. Uh, that could be bad. <laughs> Let's see what they take. Are they going to take the Prime Catcher? It's sitting right on the top. Sitting right there. Do it. But I'm not sure Prime Catcher is their best bet right now. Hmm. Yeah, but the uh, the trade-off of Kyurum is that they're also... Yeah, they take the Prime Catcher. Uh, what do they want to trap? Okay, they get the Radzard out. Uh, we probably don't want to play the Petron and Pheasantipity at this point. Ooh, are they taking three prizes now? Yeah, I think they are. That's terrible. That's terrible. Wow, what a play. Ugh. I don't know if we can come back from that. Yeah, if they bur they burst the Kyurum attack, then how do we go? How do we proceed? That's quite the wombo combo there. This player was ready because hey, jamming tower is not really a card Registrago is playing, but I guess the yeah the meta shifting. They're they're prepared for ancient box. They blow it up and they just say bet you don't have <laughs> you don't have any other means. Oof. Yeah, what a play. Yeah, they get rid of all the energy. Um, I don't see how we get out of this from here. Oof. Yeah, they clearly have played this match before. And they they played us like a fiddle there. Breaking a multi <laughs> Yeah, that was a sick play.
Um, let's see how we can get around this. And this is part of the reason why I don't necessarily think this matchup is as favorable as the as it you know possibly as is being made out to be okay we get a sada's vitality here that's nice i don't think we'll take the boss back as well um and let's go and sada uh we have we've lost three out of four roaring moon we're not even gonna one hit ko this thing right now i could one hit ko the ogre pawn and that gets me but then they just have one fire energy hmm. if we knock out okay i think we actually get the pheasantipity out pheasantipity might help us here let's see what we can get draw three okay we do get a night stretcher that gets us some stuff like, if we want to try and get a, a Roaring Moon back in here. Actually, you know what? 230. Hmm. 240, 250. I probably shouldn't have taken out the... I think we screwed this up. Yeah, because we're going to be 10 short. Knocking out the... Do we want the Zard? Okay. What if we go... Okay, so the Reggie Drago is not doing anything right now. The Ogre Pawn could knock us out. The Zard. Yeah, we're going to be 10 short here. I should have left this in because, like, wh what are we doing with a second Roaring Moon? If we're 10 short, um, Rad Zard's going to blow us up. Okay, I'm going to counter catch with the Ogre Pawn. Um, I arguably should have gone after either the Radzard or... Because now the Radzard just needs one fire energy and we're dead. Yeah. Um, we probably could have sequenced that a little better. How much fire energy is in? Two. They have one left floating around. There it is. Damn. I mean, that was going to be tough. Like, a three prize turns absolutely insane. Um... Yeah, leaving. I think we were kind of boned regardless, but had we, I should have left the Roaring Moon in the discard pile. There was no point in getting a second Roaring Moon out there. Like we weren't going to tank a hit and then <laughs> need a second Roaring Moon. We could have taken two prizes there with, we could have taken out Reggie Drago. I guess the taking out the Reggie Drago would have been dumb because they weren't going to build up another one. If we had taken out the Zard, they could have theoretically and i should have counted their energy could have teal masked and then like we were in a bad place regardless because the kyurum attack was absolutely insane um but i think there we probably could have sequenced that a little better at the end but like goaded play for for reggie drago setting up the damage in a way that that kyurum attack was going to take three prizes uh i totally didn't see that coming and i think that's my lack of experience with with ancient boxes a deck um but yeah they had it and we and they had the jamming tower too and that was an absolute backbreaker for me so clearly this player has been teching for this so whatever they got the word that maybe roaring like the ancient box deck has some sort of advantage against the reggie drago v star and they came prepared and good kudos to them ggs yeah we'll play the flutter main we unfortunately don't have okay reggie drago this is we've played this match based on limitless data technically slightly skews in favor of ancient box we have lost this one i don't know if what what order the matches are going to go in uh we have lost this match before it's it's not great i i don't think this match is as free for ancient box as the the internet might want you to believe And Tony B says, yeah, I think it's a lot closer. Yeah, the Kyurum attack is absolutely insane in this matchup. We lost because they took a three prize KO. Okay, energy switch, two cards. Now we kind of have to hope that they don't have the pieces for the next two cards. And we get a Nest Ball. That's good to get a Roaring Moon down. 
And let's see if we can get some stuff in the discard pile with Pokestop. Night Stretcher, Poke Gear. Um, maybe we go and oh, hold on. Have we played a supporter yet? I don't think we have. So we can go grab. Let's grab Explorer's Guidance here, and hopefully we can just get better set up. Uh, yeah, the Earth and Vessel's good, as well as you know what? Let's grab a Nest Ball here, and we'll throw the two energy in the discard pile for a future Sada's Vitality play. And let's get rid of this Walking Wake. We'll go and grab two Dark Energy. And do we bench the second Roaring Moon? Uh, I think we do just in case. Just so we have that ready for us. And let's pray. Do they have the pieces here? Flutter main can hold us down a little bit. Now, Pokestop is... Oh, they get the Dragapult in the discard pile. That part sucks. They do get the Regidrago V-Star down, but they can't use their V-Star power yet. Unless they play something like a Canceling Cologne. Interesting, they're going to Teal Dance, so they probably have another Grass Energy in hand. Or it's a, a gross miscalculation on their part. Nope, they don't have it. Okay, they're hiding. They're hiding. Okay, yeah, they're going to do the that whole thing. Okay, let's see how they play it from here. All your Pokemon are over 110? Uh, no, uh, Fluttermane is not. Yep, here comes. Some Dragapult action here. Oh, and they get the research too. Are you kidding me? Temple of Sinnoh doesn't matter. Uh, we do have to be mindful of the potential for a, a Kyurum attack later, though. I think because of that, let's go use... Uh, we could use Secret Box. I don't know if we want to use Secret Box right now. Okay. I think we, we saw his Vitality first, regardless. They're probably going to start trying to build up a... Oh. Not going to build up a second Reggie Drago. Okay. Let's see. I probably drop like 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. And then they can potentially drop both of them on the following turn. And then we're dead if we can't bench anything else. So that's something to, to keep in mind here. Let's go and bring this up. They are playing for it. Let's see if we can make some stuff happen here. If we go Sada's Vitality, we build these up. We do have Secret Box. We might have to play Secret Box here uh, to get at least one charm so that the Kyurum doesn't blow up this Roaring Moon. Especially... Yeah, if we don't have anything else... Do we play the Fez? I don't like these cards. I really don't like these cards. The Fez and Dippity does open up so many potential issues though okay i'm gonna attach and let's go and get rid of i think we get rid of guidance we get rid of a counter catcher and we get rid of i think we get rid of i think we get rid of our counter catchers here and we go grab sada we grab ancient booster capsule do we get a... I think we have to get a Nest Ball, right? To get a Roaring Moon down. And then Stadium. Let's go Pokestop. Because, yeah, there is a world where they blow up. They, they play Jamming Tower or something like that. And then we're cooked. Okay. We lose one of our Roaring Moons. Yeah, I think we have to bench a Roaring Moon here. Okay, 180. Yeah, let's swing. They can't afford to Kyurum at this point.
Let's see it. Oh, Prime Catcher. Yeah, they hiding. All right. Can we? We have a potential out here. Let's see what we can do. Okay, they get a Night Stretcher and a Nest Ball. Do we have... Do we get rid of all our Gusting? We got rid of two out of our three Gusting options. That feels bad. That feels bad. Okay, Switch. Probably the one on the bench. Yep. And if we do get the opportunity to target down one of the two, do we go after the one in the act? Do we go after this Reggie Drago or we go after this Reggie Drago? I guess they, they still need multiple pieces, right? They have to get... Oh, God. Okay, they get rid of the Canceling Cologne. Uh, the Noivern is annoying. Um, During your opponent, damage opponent's basic Pokemon? Oh, God. How do we get around that? Uh, getting rid of our counter catchers was very bad in that regard. Because now... Now they just wall us off, right? Oh, they're just going to go for... Go for the KOs here. Yeah, this can still get one-shotted. That's a horrifying... Like, if they go for the Kyurem attack... They can still blow that up. So I don't like that. I think we have to go and super rod these back in. Okay. We have no energy in the discard pile. Let's go and get one back out. And... Yeah, the Noivern is... What is that? It's 70. Prevent all damage... Basic Pokemon. Yeah, the... That part sucks. That part sucks. Let's go and Pokestop. Nope. That's not what we wanted. I think we hold on to... We hold our hand for now. Let's go Vengeance Fletchling for 200. Yeah, teching the Noivern in specifically is, is foul. Like, that, again, Noivern is not a card being played that much. That kind of got took, taken out. Let's see, Noivern. Yeah, like, at World, like, no one was playing that. Okay, they have it. And they could just wall us over and over again. And we took our gusting options out. Okay, Halucha. Or... Hmm. Let's see. How aggressively do they want to play? Okay, they're still dropping damage, so they're not using the Noivern attack. And they're saying, bet, you can't keep up this chain of Roaring Moons, and we're going to blow up multiple eventually. And, like, I can't blame them for that. Yeah, that's, uh... Here, let's go and grab a fresh Roaring Moon back out. But this might cost them. 210. Um, the Pheasant Dippity might help us here. Let's actually go and Poke Gear. Maybe we can grab another Sada. Okay. I think we Sada first. Can we get... Okay, we're at 220. Can we get six in the discard pile? Um, let's actually, I'm pushing for it. Let's go in Pheasantipity first. Flip the script, draw three. Okay, we get a second Ultra Ball. And let's keep digging. Pokestop, just dig to the bottom. Okay. That's 230. 240. I think we're going to be short. I think we're short one. Ah, oh, hold on. No, we have it. 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 Take Greninja. That's 270. 
and then we grind up ancient booster capsule and let's go grind up this iron bundle and we have two earthen vessels in the deck and we get 280 for the one hit ko and that should be game that should be game yeah let's see it bring him out there we go ggs we made the massive push there the pheasantipity coming through clutch just helping us dig through our deck a little deeper so that we could find a couple extra cards there and set us up for an insane play getting all of those ancient cards into the discard pile so that we could get that i could have played the I also could have played the superior energy retrieval and also get some energy in the process of setting that up. But uh, regardless, we were able to prevent ourselves from getting like getting destroyed by the the Reggie Drago, the Kyurum play there. And that ended up working out in our favor, getting that one big KO on that Reggie Drago V Star. Yeah, one of the trade-offs of Reggie Drago V Star is it's really hard to build. It's pretty much impossible to th build a third Reggie Drago. Um, so once we got through uh, that second one, like that was kind of it. So we'll take that win. GG's. And there we go. That is a look at Ancient Box in the Shrouded Fable format. Again, some question marks on whether or not Petrarunt and Pheasantipity are optimal in the deck. Um, there are definitely matches where having them is awesome, but they, they do come with some cons as well. And in particular, give you less room for uh, those big KOs against some massive Pokemon. But I did want to showcase that to, to show you the option. I have covered Ancient Box before without those cards. So I did want to show you what it looks like with them in there. Unfortunately, we were not able to get Petrarunt rolling in the video, but we did, Pheasantipity did help us out in that one Reggie Drago match which was fantastic. If you're watching this on Twitch, stick around. But if you're on YouTube, we got to get going. Thank you so much for watching. You can find me on all the things, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram at in third person. You can find me on Twitch at in third person where I stream the Pokemon trading card game every Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And check out the website in thirdperson.com for more articles and videos on video games, board games, and other nerdy pursuits. So until the next one, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.